Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some research that shows why I'm not a fan of using the low FODMAP diet for an extended period of time. Now, that being said, there's a time and a place for everything. I'm pretty convinced of that. So if you have used the low FODMAP diet for four to six weeks and then reintroduced food systematically with a dietitian, and you found that that was beneficial for you, then I have no problem with doing that. What I do have a problem with is the use of the low FODMAP diet in the SIBO world in particular, where A, we are telling people that you can starve the SIBO with your diet, which has absolutely no research backing to prove it, but also we are not using this tool correctly. It is very frequently the case where people with SIBO get stuck on this diet for months, if not years at a time, and that's where we really get into a pickle because the low FODMAP diet causes or deepens dysbiosis. For those of you who are new to this channel or new to this world, dysbiosis is an imbalance in the good and the bad microbes in an ecosystem. So whether we're talking about bacteria or yeast or perhaps even parasites and viruses, there are going to be good and bad players and you want the good to outweigh the bad. Dysbiosis is a state where either you don't have enough of the good guys, you have too many bad guys, or perhaps a combination of both. So let me show you the particular flavor of dysbiosis that low FODMAP appears to cause for most people. And then we'll kind of huddle back up at the end and talk about what you can do if you are finding yourself stuck on this diet and you want to eat FODMAPs again. So here's the study I'd like to show you. It's titled Efficacy of an Irritable Bowel Syndrome Diet in the Treatment of Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth, a Narrative Review. And there are a couple of points here that I want to make from the abstract of the article itself. If you jump down towards the end of the abstract, they say, based on currently available literature, the potential efficacy of the IBS diet in SIBO is largely hypothetical. We don't have research that supports the claim that we can really starve the SIBO. That may or may not actually be true. But what we do know is the following. If you jump up a few lines, you'll see they say, a low FODMAP diet proposed for IBS may promote a negative shift in the gut microbiota and deepen the existing state of dysbiosis in SIBO patients. Oof. Oof. That's, that's brutal. And this is a great example of what I've talked about in podcast episodes and what I'm going to talk about in some future videos here on this channel. The treatments that we do for SIBO can dig you a deeper hole. And then it's really no wonder why nobody feels better doing it. Now, let's get into the actual article itself. And if you jump down to about page four, you'll see this section highlighted here. Now, you're going to see a pattern emerge. There might be an outlier here or there, but by and large, the pattern is not favorable. Right, so we have a couple of studies right at the top that show a decrease in hydrogen volume, and that sounds promising. But also, if you look at that second one, they, they also showed a decrease in bifidobacteria level. Bifido are the classic quintessential good guy of the microbiome. You want more bifido, not fewer. And this is one study among many that says that low FODMAP starves the bifido. So is it worth starving the bad guys? Possibly, maybe, that we don't have research for if you know for a fact that you are also starving good guys. Jumping down, you'll again, you'll see a pattern emerging. All of the, all of the studies on here that look at the stool microbiome, so whether it be the 16S or GA map, whatever that might be, all of them unanimously show a decrease in bifidobacteria. The third one down shows an increase in dysbiosis index. The fourth one down also shows a reduction in bacteroides and an increase in bilophila. That's not good. The decrease in, or the increase in bilophila in particular should make a lot of you jump right away from the screen because bilophila is the big quintessential hydrogen sulfide producing microbe. So here we are trying to starve the SIBO, but are we actually creating more hydrogen sulfide based dysbiosis? I think that there's a high, high likelihood that we are doing that. Last one on this page, again, reduction in bifidobacteria and increase in bilophila. This is a definite trend. And then if we scroll down, there's actually a lot more studies from there. We've got decrease in acromantia mucinophilia. This is a microbe that's really important for regulating the health of the mucus lining and therefore the gut lining. So if you have leaky gut, you should probably care about acromantia. That same study is showing a reduction in Fecalobacterium presnitzii and ruminococcus. These are really important keystone species in the microbiome, particularly Fecalobacterium. And here we are starving it with a low FODMAP diet. 
again, for what? The the faint possibility that maybe we're starving the SIBO? I don't know, man. Again, look, here we've got decrease in bifido. One fluky article here, 2021, shows an increase in bacteroidetes, bifido, and lactobacillus. But that's the only one. Every other study shows a consistent decrease in bifidobacterium, decrease in actinobacteria, decrease in uh, fecalobacterium, overall just decrease in good guys and an increase in bad guys like bilophila. This study right here, the third from the bottom, shows an increase in bacteroides. And like I said, the third one from the top also shows an increase in bacteroides. So what are we really doing to the microbiome when we rob them of their food? Are we actually starving the SIBO or are we just starving the good guys? Hold on, let me come out of head bubble. So again, I'm, I know that you're only doing what you feel is necessary to feel better ASAP, and I appreciate that. And I actually do feel for the practitioners who have led you astray. They're just doing what they think is best, and they've been doing what they've been taught. But what they've been taught is wrong, and what you have been taught is probably harmful. This diet is going to cause a deepened negative shift in the gut microbiota, especially if you do it for a prolonged period of time. When this is overused and abused and misunderstood as it is in the SIBO community, people are getting harmed. And I feel like I'm alone in an echo chamber, just me and Amy talking about this as a possible side effect of low FODMAP, and everybody else is just happy to starve the SIBO. Now, as you can tell from both the paintings behind me and my shirt that says you can enjoy FODMAPs, I am not one to prescribe this diet for a long period of time. Again, a couple weeks as a tool, sure. Longer than that, absolutely not. And one of my areas of expertise that I've honed in on in the last handful of years is that I'm really freaking good at helping people get off of the low FODMAP diet, reintroduce all of the foods behind me, and basically get back to eating a normal human healthy diet. If that sounds at all appealing to you and you want to build yourself a SIBO-proof body that can eat onion and garlic until the cows come home, please do check out FODMAP Freedom. I'm going to put a link down below. We are opening for enrollment in just four days. So Monday, April 22nd, we're enrolling just for the people on the wait list. So what you could do right now is go ahead and click the link down below, put your name on the wait list. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm just going to let you know when the doors are open and send you the link. And then you can take all the time you need to decide if this is going to be something for you. You could do a discovery call with a FODMAP Freedom Coach. You can make the right decision for you, but ultimately, if you want to eat FODMAPs again and feel good, feel like a normal human being, and not have to think about SIBO anymore, come over to FODMAP Freedom. Let me teach you the ways of the SIBO-proof folk, and you too can be frolicking off into the rainbows, bucket of garlic and guacamole in hand. I hope to see you soon. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.